So I wanted to do something a little different today. This is the DIY mini quad. I know you guys have seen it. This is my Free Sky Tyrannus. I've been flying with this multi we Flip 1.5 from Ready to Fly Quads. Just straight out of the box, it's amazing. $15. And this DIY mini quad is so much fun to fly. And when I got into this hobby several years ago, I followed a company called Open Pilot. They have a flight controller called the CC3D. And at that point in time, this thing was nearly impossible to get. But recently, I found that they're available on getfpv.com. So in this video, I'm going to show you guys how I'll walk through the process of wiring this board up, configuring it with the open pilot software and seeing how it holds up on the mini quad. Now let me point out that this is a, definitely a significant upgrade. This board's about $89 from GetFPV compared to my $15 multi week Definitely a step up in price. Let's see how it holds up in terms of handling and fly ability. Okay, let me start with showing you guys this port. Plug right here and then it goes off to your different servo leads where you get power and then signal to and from from your receiver. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug this in. Gone ahead and disconnected my multi weave from my receiver. And I'm going to pull this off. Then unplug our ESCs. CC3D is mounted. I did use Kyosho Zill to mount it. I love this stuff for mounting flight controllers when you might not have the ability to use hardware. The CC3D does come with mounting hardware. So you see these nylon spacers and screws. Just keep that in mind. One other thing, just size wise, I want to show you that it's nearly identical in size to the multi we flip. Next thing I want to do is wire up my receiver. So I'll show you where these leads go. Here we have our receiver wired up. Now I'm basing this off of the instructions on the open pilot site so hopefully this is right this is my first time to do the setup but pin one you have your signal power and ground pin two blue three yellow four green five orange and six purple now we have all four of our escs and motors wired up and that goes in the order of one two three and four corresponds to one two three and four pins on the right side of the board. Now with our CC3D wired up, I'm going to download the Open Pilot software. And the great thing about this is I'm on a Mac and there's a Mac version, there's even a Linux version. So I'm gonna download it and we're gonna connect our CC3D to my Mac. One thing that's a little different about the CC3D, it uses a mini USB cable. It does not come with a cable. So very similar to the connector you might use for your digital camera. So if you come from the world of NASA or APM, you'll be used to a micro USB. And you can see we have a blinking status light and our power LED is on. So I've launched the open pilot ground control station and you'll notice there's a little setup wizard. It tells us make sure you remove all props. Since this is a mini quad, I'm just going to ignore that for the time being. And we're gonna go through the setup. So click next, ask if we wanna update the firmware, definitely want to do that, so I'll hit upgrade. It says please disconnect your open pilot board. I've disconnected the board and I'll hit OK. Now you can see it says please connect the board to the USB port. Make sure your battery is not connected. I've powered up the board. Now you can see the firmware is being uploaded. It tells me the board is updated, so I'm going to click next to continue. And then it's detecting the type of connection. That's good, USB. We're going to stick with PWM, a multi-rotor, and the X configuration. Okay, now it's asking refresh rate of the ESCs. I'm using Turnigy Plush, which support the 400 hertz rate, so I'm going to accept that. Now, this is my first time doing this software, but I've, so far I've been impressed with the wizard just walking me through the different settings. Before we click next, there's a hardware connection illustration. Now we've gone ahead and done that already, but just to show you the one, two, three, four setup, and then our different color channels. So it's always useful to have a little connection diagram. And now we're doing a calibration, get it on a level surface, and click calculate. 
So that's done. Looks like it's successful. We'll click next. Okay, now we're gonna do output calibration. I've powered up the mini quad and powered up the Tyrannus. So we have a bind. So once again, it says to remove all props, but this is a mini quad with tiny props. So I'm just going to ignore that for now. If you're doing it with a larger quad, definitely remove your props. So I'm gonna hit next. So what's going to happen is I'm gonna click start. Then we're gonna move this slider just to where motor no number one starts to spin. And if you look in the background, this is motor number one. So let's give this a try. So I'm just gonna slide it. Okay, you can see as I slide it, it'll start to spin up. And I just wanna get it to right where the engine just starts to spin stable. So I'm gonna say right there, and I'm gonna click stop. Okay, so I'm gonna click next, and we're gonna do that for motor number two. And at the same time, what's good about this is you can actually see that the motor rotation is correct. All four motors are done, I'm gonna click next. And now we can save this configuration. It's gonna write all that data to the board. Go ahead and click next. And now we'll do the radio setup wizard. So I will click radio setup wizard. It launches us into the open pilot configuration screen. Now. Once again, this is my first time ever doing this and it's very involved as you guys can probably tell compared to other systems, but at the same time, the wizard has been incredibly helpful. I haven't run into any problems yet. So it says arming settings are now set to always disarmed for your safety. I'm gonna hit okay. So now we're going to walk through the radio inputs configuration. I'll click next. And we're going to leave the default of acro for normal transmitter for fixed wing or quad. I'll hit next. Mode two for me, throttle and rudder on the left, elevator and ailerons on the right. So yep, hit next. Okay, now it's asking me to move the throttle stick. So move the throttle stick. Now it's asking me to move the roll stick. So I'm just gonna move that. Now it's asking me to move the pitch. So on my Tyrannus, I'm moving the pitch and you can see it's picking that up. Now I'm gonna move the yaw. Okay, now it's asking me to toggle my flight mode switch, but for now, normally I just leave the defaults I mess with flight modes after I get comfortable with the flight controllers. So I'm gonna skip that for now. Now it's asking for an accessory channel. I'm going to skip that as well. An accessory one, accessory two, I'm just skipping all these. Now it's asking me to center all my controls. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I guess I'll also center my throttle as well. It asks to center trims too. So let's get that and we'll hit next. Okay, now it's asking to move all controls to their maximum extents in both directions and then press next. So what's interesting is when I pull down on my pitch, you'll see that that actually goes up on the screen. So I'm assuming there'll be an option to reverse this here in a minute. Okay, so just as I suspected on the next screen, you'll see that if I throttle up, that throttle goes up. I go left on the rudder. And that follows. Aileron to the left. That looks good. Now if I pitch down, you'll see that the stick goes the opposite way on the screen. So what we can do is up here, there's a checkbox for pitch. I'll go ahead, check, go ahead and check that. And now it looks to be going the right way. So I'll go ahead and click next. Okay, it's telling me we haven't saved anything yet, so I'm gonna click next. Okay, it looks like before we save these settings, we're on the arming settings, and we want to arm airframe using throttle off, and by default, I think it's always disarmed. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to set it to a yaw right, which is similar to the multi-wee flip, and that's just something that will be easy for me, but you guys can obviously configure that to whatever you want it to be. I'm gonna leave the default arming time out of 30 seconds. And to disarm, it says is done by throttle off and opposite of above combination. So that will be down and to the left with the throttle stick to disarm. And now let's go ahead and save these settings. Now our configuration is saved. Now I just discovered this, a lot of this is just trial and error, but I tried arming with it still connected to my MacBook and I'll show you. You'll hear the little lady on the computer telling us that the CC3D is armed. Before we do this maiden, just want to show you when we're connected to the computer and armed, heard the voice command. Now, if I arm now, you'll see that that status LED goes from slow blink to fast blink. So 
It's just a visual cue that you're armed. Okay, so let's see what this does. I have no clue what to expect. It's my first configuration ever with the Open Pilot CC3D. Let's see. So we're hovering, that's good. Wow, it's incredibly responsive. Now you do see a little bit of oscillation. But, you know, that's to be somewhat expected given I did no tuning at all. And I can't really tell. I think we're in a self-level mode by default. But, I mean, you can see this thing is incredibly responsive. To be honest, I'm very impressed so far with how this is handling. I do want to work through those oscillations as well as maybe try to get some good gain so that we can do a little bit of acro with this guy. Super fun to fly. Okay, that was my first experience with the Open Pilot CC3D. And let me leave you guys with just a few thoughts. First off, you know I've done quite a few videos on APM, KK, Multi-Wii, NASA, and this by far is the easiest board to configure. Now, I realize there were a lot of steps, but it was in a wizard format, and it just gives me the confidence knowing that in the future I'm gonna be tuning this guy for just more stable flight, do some acro stuff, and I feel like with that software it's gonna be super easy to do. And wiring configuration took about an hour to do from start to finish. Now, there's a lot of guys flying this on the QAV, so I might give this a test run on my QAV 400. Hope that was useful. I know it was a little bit drawn out. I didn't realize how much configuration was involved, but once again, it was fairly straightforward. And if you want to give this mini quad a try, you can download the files on Thingiverse. There's a build log on Garage Pilots. I'll be sure to post that. And I'll definitely be sharing what I learned about tuning this CC3D board in the near future. And until then, thanks for watching.